Partnerships in protecting rock holes in the Gawler Ranges aims to link together the cultural and ecological understanding of rock holes in the Gawler Ranges of South Australia. This project was delivered through a partnership between the Gawler Ranges Native Title Claim Group, Gawler Ranges Pastoralists, the South Australian Arid Lands Natural Resource Management Board, the South Australian Native Title Services and the Department for Water. This project was funded by the Commonwealth through the Caring for Our Country program. My name's Vic Stuggy. I work for the South Australian Native Title Services, known as SANS. I'm the working on country coordinator for the Gawler Ranges Native Title Claim Area. I've been involved in this project for over two years now, working with um, Mel and Glenn in, uh, and traditional owners going on country and identifying where our traditional rock holes are using our senior men and women and also taking youth with us on school holidays. And uh, we're travelling through our traditional country, going back to our water resources. We've got no river, we've got no creeks, we rely on the granite outcrops. These granite outcrops in the desert are like islands in the sea. They are quite isolated and can support rare plants and animals. The plants and animals associated with granite outcrops are not largely recorded for South Australia and this project provides an opportunity to survey these isolated wetland environments. And for thousands of years, our people have been surviving in this area. Before the pastoralists, before the Afghans, before anyone. This is our country. We're the traditional owner for this country, and today we can use two, two knowledge, cultural knowledge and Western knowledge. With uh, looking after country, with the Western knowledge, we're using GIS, GPS. We've been learning with the state government from hard how to record our sites and get them registered quicker. So it's important that we get on country and we form a relationship and we can work together with the state government, pastoralists and traditional owners for a better environment and look after this biodiversity that's in this area. Now I'll speak in language. Nana ma nindi bulga nana na, nana nora mimi bra nana de erdi, nana kuku de nindi bulga. We know this country has been passed on from family to family where the rock holes are and where the sacred sites are. Nana rock our lindy bulga, nana pudding mil me baballa, naka jack old rock our jorda, nana science tuta, bugs tuta, mono cubby wearing ya, mullop, mono erdy, now jamoko, kamiko, chichiko, balurkina, morkawia, chinna, barari, looking, walking, hunting in this country. I'm Glenn Scholes and this is Mel White and we're from the Department for Water which is responsible for managing water for e uh, economic, environmental and cultural purposes. Um, the reason that we're involved in this project is really to look at the ecological health around rock holes. In the Gawler Ranges environment there's no rivers or streams of any major significance and all the important water sources are linked to rock holes in granite outcrops. And what we're, our job is to do is to try and integrate Western science and Aboriginal cultural knowledge in the important plant species around these water holes. Mel, what are the kinds of things that we're looking at? Uh, when we go to the rock holes, we do a site assessment, and that site assessment includes a vegetation assessment. And part of um, linking the science and the culture together is to record um, the vegetation scientifically, but also culturally. So. We'll look at tree species and um, an important tree species we find in a lot of rock holes 
is Acacia anura, also known as mulga, but locally as wannery, and that's also a very important tree for artifacts, tools, and um, food. Uh, we also look at shrub species. Uh, one of the very important shrub species we're finding is an eremophila, um, which is used for bush medicine. And then we also look at grasses. Some of the grasses include woolly butt, another important, important food species. And um, then we also look for aquatic plants growing in the rock holes. Uh, there's a rare plant in the Gawler Ranges called granite mudwort. The granite mudwort is one of these small and important plants. It's restricted only to the granite rock holes within the Gawler Ranges area. It is listed nationally as an important and vulnerable species. Currently, there are only five known subpopulations thought to contain 500 individual plants. This project has identified new occurrences of this species outside of their recorded range, adding to the knowledge of plants within this area. Fraser's rock hole uh, doing a macro invertebrate sample or otherwise just aquatic insects or aquatic bugs is the best way to describe them. Uh, we're collecting them here just to see as other studies have shown that rock holes um, contain you know, some new species so we just try to collect them so if EPA identify them for us so we can find out if there's anything new or rare or they're just your normal bugs that occur everywhere, so this is all new information pretty much, nothing's like this has been collected out here before. Plants and animals associated with rock holes may live out their entire life cycle within rock holes. As the rock holes dry out, seeds survive until the next rain. Like the plants, macroinvertebrates or bugs, such as fairy shrimp and clan shrimp, form thick shelled eggs that can survive in the dry sediment and hatch out within the next rain. The other thing we're looking at too is the overall condition and health of these rock holes. Um, rock hole environments have had a long history of human use. Aboriginal people used them as important gathering places and for resources. Explorers used them as important staging posts. The Afghan cameleers used them as important trading routes and landholders used them as important watering points and stock routes. So rock holes have had a wide and, ve and sometimes heavy use across them and what we're going to, what we look at is the overall ecological condition of those. So the things that we're looking at is erosion at the site or sedimentation of water holes. We're also looking at um, grazing impact from stock and also feral animals. And a lot of these rock hole environments are no longer used as watering points and feral animals can quite, have quite a large impact at these sites. And what we hope to do is bring all this information together to look at providing some information to, for ongoing discussions about managing these rock hole environments. Through this project we found many sites of significance to the Buller Ranges traditional owners. They are engraving sites, art sites and stone arrangements. This emu, Marlu and emu, more emu here. Big mom. The aim of this project is for a long term business plan supported by the Working on Country team. The role of the team would be setting up monitoring points and recording of data. The database is an important tool. Recorded data, ecological and cultural, access for men and women, plus restricted knowledge. Long-term custodianship of rock holes involves traditional owners, science, landholders and government departments. Building on this project, we're looking at sponsorship and con continuing the Working on Country program after 2013 where we've employed three Indigenous rangers that work in the, in the claim area and um, they've been helping us with the Caring for Country Rock Hole Project. We look at this as we're, we're a role model to get Indigenous people back on country. 
We work with the senior elders and they've been passing on their traditional knowledge, which is great. And we also think about the future because our kids are the future.